Hi and welcome back to the third part of the spinal cord. Here we'll look at the internal structure. However, a lot of tracks will be explained in another lesson in the sensory motor systems. Here we have an MRI transverse section where you see you see a white area and a gray area surrounding. This white area corresponds to the gray matter and the surrounding, surrounding gray, uh, gray area corresponds to the white matter, okay? So you see, you can identify the dorsal horns and ventral horns of the gray matter. So histologically, the spinal cord is formed by gray matter surrounded by white matter. This is a very simple, simple and very primitive organization. Uh, the gray matter, is forms uh, is has a butterfly shape with two dorsal horns and two ventral horns in the middle there is a central canal that is the caudal continuation of the fourth ventricle we can cut the spinal cord in two halves a dorsal and a ventral the dorsal being sensory and the ventral being motor if, and surrounding, we have the funicles, funicles, okay? All these pathways that go up and down in the spinal cord. In more detail, we'll see that the white matter is full of axons and most of them are myelinic. However, in the gray matter, the axons are amyelinic. Otherwise, won't be enough space. There is a communication between the two halves, the left and the right, uh, half of the spinal cord in the gray matter. And this is the gray commissure that goes on top and ventral to the central canal and is formed by amyelinic fibers. This is why it's gray commissure and it functions in reflexes under the central canal and dorsal to the ventral median fissure that separates both ventral funiculi. There is the white commissure and white meaning myelinic fibers. Looking at the spinal cord in, in a global image, we see that there is a dorsal funiculus, lateral funiculus and ventral funiculus on each side. The two dorsal funiculi are completely separated by a connective tissue. And the ventral funiculi are partially separated by the ventral median fissure here. But they are connected at the level of the white commissure. And the lateral funiculi are completely separated. Here you see in a dorsal section the difference between the gray matter and the white matter. These are hematocylin eosin staining. These are impregnations of, uh, of argentic impregnations, this Belchowski. You see that there are axons entering and leaving the gray matter all around the gray matter. As you see, axons leaving the gray matter in this case, okay, to the white matter here. And also at the level of the dorsolateral sulcus where the dorsal root enters the spinal cord. Here you have, and also at the ventral horn as well, but here, you, and, and here, ventrally, here at this level, here, you have these axons leaving, leaving the gray matter, right? This is the gray matter, part of the ventral horn, and the axons are leaving the gray matter in order to form, in this case, the ventral root of a spinal nerve. So the aspect is quite different depending on the level we are making a section. At the thoracolumbar level, for example, there is the less gray matter and the white matter surrounds the gray matter with the uh, dorsal funiculi, lateral funiculi and ventral funiculi. Here you can see clearly the dorsolateral sulcus right here. However, at the level of the intumescence, as there are more neurons, there are more motor neurons because there are more muscles in the limbs than in the axis. So we Find, we found more gray matter than in between intumescence, right? Uh, when we study the gray matter, it's good to examine as uh, uh, and the examination of the rexus laminae. 
is very interesting. For, as we see here, is the more external laminae is the marginal nucleus right here and is related with noxious and thermal stimuli. Underneath, we have the substantia gelatinosa of Rolando for noxious touch and thermal stimuli. Underneath, we have the third and the fourth lamina for what is called the nucleus propius. We have the nucleus propius here. It is for cutaneous sensory perception, right? Only for a strong stimuli. Underneath, we have the fifth and the sixth lamina where there are connections with corticospinal and rubrospinal tracts. Okay. Also is related with visceral inputs and the origin of the fasciculus propius, this fascicle that connects several spinal segments in between. Then we have the seventh lamina and is filled with interneurons. And here we have the thoracic nucleus that we'll be looking at very closely and in detail in the sensory motor system lessons. Then we have the eighth. This is for motor neurons, alpha and gamma motor neurons, for axial muscles, for the, for the regions of the neck, shoulders and trunk. Then we have the ninth lamina for, again, motor neurons, alpha and gamma motor neurons, for axial and especially for limb muscles. And then finally, we have number 10 is the commissural nucleus for visceral afferences that form fibers in the ventral funiculus. Okay. So we have here, this is the dorsal horn, ventral horn, and the intermediate gray substance with a lateral portion and a medial portion. For all the fascicles that are located and tracts that are located in the white matter, this is a summary. On the dorsal funiculus, we identify the cunid fascicle and the gracile fascicle, mostly involved in proprioception. We look at them in the lesson of the sensory motor systems. Then we have the dorsal spinal cerebella and the ventral spinal cerebellar tracts. These are for unconscious proprioception. They reach the cerebellum. We also have here in the upper half of the dorsal funiculus, the spinal thalamic tract. This is this tract is involved in nociception, especially important in carnivores, right? And this tract comes from the spinal segments in the lateral funiculus, and it reaches the lateral cervical nucleus at the level of C1, and from there fibers cross to incorporate to the medial lemniscus. The standing tracts we have here as the lateral corticospinal tract that we have seen its initiation, its beginning at the decussation of the pyramids, right? At the, when we were studying the brain stem. And this tract goes down and is for uh, movements that precise, that precise movements, right? And in, in, in ungulates, doesn't go as far as the uh, cervical segments. Then we have the rubrospinal tract. This is an extra pyramidal tract right here. This is for movements. Then we have the lateral tecto, tecto tegmento spinal tract, right? Comes from the tegmentum mesencephaly and it reaches the cervical spinal segments and also it reaches the first thoracic segments and is some of the neurons reach the sympathetic preganglionic sympathetic neurons here another we will have here is the spinothalamic tract this is an ascending tract for nociception then we have a motor tract the medullary reticulospinal tract here okay and in the lateral funiculus and in the ventral funiculus, we have the pontine reticulospinal tract. This tract, the medullary reticulospinal tract, goes down bilaterally. And this one, they have to cross the midline. These fibers cross the midline. Okay, they are motor tracts act acting especially over gamma motor neurons. We have this lateral vestibulospinal tract 
coming from the lateral vestibular nucleus in the more lateral portion of the ventral funiculus. This reaches all the spinal segments and is to keep balance, right? Increasing the muscle tone where uh, the, the ipsilateral to the in bending of the body. So we have the medial vestibular spinal tract, right? This reaches the cervical segments, right? And for the movement of the neck in keeping balance. And the medial tectospinal tract is coming from the tectum mesencephaly. And also more medially located near the ventral median fissure, we have the ventral corticospinal tract, a descending tract, pyramidal tract. These fibers here have crossed at the decussation of the pyramids, forming the lateral corticospinal tract. However, these ones have not crossed at the decussation. However, they will cross at the, when they have to enter the gray matter. So we were talking in another lesson. Here we have in the brain, in the brain stem at the level of the medulla oblongata, the spinal tract of the trigeminal nerve and medially the nucleus of the spinal tract of the trigeminal nerve. And this continue in the spinal cord, the spinal tract continues as the dorsolateral tract or Lissauer's bundle. You see, this is the, in the spinal cord, the dorsolateral sulcus. This is part of a dorsal root of a spinal nerve. And these fibers enter here. They are myelinic and amyelinic fibers. Some of them, they reach uh, the, the dorsal horn. Some of them, they travel horizontally to other, dorsal, to other segments of the spinal cord. And underneath here, the nucleus of the spinal, the, of the spinal tract of the trigeminal nerve continues in the spinal cord as the, as the substantia gelatinosa. There you have it, the substantia gelatinosa. And on top of it, we have the marginal nucleus. And underneath, the nucleus propius, the ones that uh, these are the ones that we named on the Rexet laminae. Okay. So, and as we were saying, the aspect of the ventral horn is not similar in all the spinal segments as in the, in the, as in the segments that do not are involved in the cervical intumescence. So we have motor neurons, but just for the axial muscles. However, when we are at the level of the cervical, the cervical or lumbar intumescence right here, what do we have? There are more motor neurons. So we have two big elevations or two big uh, amounts of neurons. So on the later, in the ventral horn, on the lateral aspect, we have an accumulation of motor neurons for limb muscles. And on the medial aspect, we have the motor neurons for the axial muscles. So at the level of the intumescence, the increase in motor neurons is located on the lateral aspect of the ventral horn. We also know from the autonomic sympathetic nervous system that uh, between T1 and L4 and L5, in the lateral aspect of the intermediary substance, there is an accumulation of preganglionic sympathetic neurons that form this lateral horn right here. Or they form this nucleus area, this collection of cells, right? And as you see, they are slightly different from a motor neuron. These are preganglionic sympathetic neurons. The same for the sacral segments. There is an accumulation of neurons that forms the sacral parasympathetic nucleus. Okay, and these are preganglionic parasympathetic neurons, and these are located at the level of C1, C2, and C3. Well, thank you very much.